Election day less than a month away and a recent announcement from New York's current mayor could become an issue in the race for New York's next mayor. Yeah, mayor de Blasio announcing that the city is phasing out the gifted and talented program for elementary students. It's a program critics say discriminates against minorities. Democratic mayoral candidate Eric Adams is one of those critics saying the DOE is dysfunctional, but he said he'd keep the program and then expand it. All right, let's hear it from the man himself, Eric Adams, joining us this morning. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Always good to be here with the two of you. Thank you so much. All right, so what are you going to do with the gifted and talented program if you are elected mayor of New York City? We don't want uh, any kind of like, you know, spokesperson says or an un unofficial source <laughs> says. We want to hear it straight from you because a lot of parents are upset about this. Well, uh, first, uh, I, I want to be uh, clear. When I talk about the dysfunctionality of the Department of Education, uh, it is not the hardworking teachers and administrators. It is a system that continuously fail, particularly black and brown children, but all of our children. 65% of black and brown children in this city uh, don't meet proficiency every year. That's unacceptable. And so I've made it clear throughout this entire campaign that if I am fortunate enough to become the mayor of this city, we're going to expand how we look at accelerated learners. How do we expand that, give them the opportunity to reach their full potential? But we, get, we have to do something else. We have to look at those children who learn differently. I was one of them. Uh, those who are dyslexic, those who have learning disabilities, uh, what are we doing to expand their opportunities? And so I'm going to reserve my right uh, if I'm fortunate to be mayor, uh, to determine how we handle gifted and talented, deal with the issue of too much uh, segregation in our schools, we know that, and ensure that we create a system where every child reaches his or her full potential. So, ma so let me ask you something, Mr. Learners. Adams. How difficult would it be to overturn what the mayor is doing right now? And would you consider expanding charter schools in the city uh, because some of them seem to be having some success in a lot of, uh, you know, the, the lower income neighborhoods? Well, first let's deal with the difficulty uh, question that you ask. Uh, we have in this city what's called mayoral control. I'm going to have to fight for that again uh, in the first few months of being elected, if I am elected, uh, to ensure I hold on to mayoral control. If that is done, then I have the opportunity to bring stakeholders together, parents, as well as administrators and experts to look at how do we expand opportunities for accelerated learners. Now, when you look at the issue of charter schools, first of all, it's, out of, it's beyond my control. The state makes that determination. But I want to be clear, it's about uplifting excellence. We have to stop talking this adults conversation about charter school, district school. One failed children, 65 percent of black and brown. The other 40 percent of black and brown. No one is reaching the potential that I believe. And I think that let's look at the best that charter schools have to offer. Let's look at the best of that district schools are doing. We have some amazing district schools and charter schools, but we don't scale them up. That is what I believe we must start doing. Uh, Mr. Adams, I want to ask about crime in the city. Uh, this is a major factor in the mayoral race coming up. I, I know that it is down slightly from 2020, but it's not necessarily low. I mean, we just saw in the past week a lady pushed into an oncoming subway car. And personally, for someone that takes a subway almost every single day, I, I now have to stand behind a metal beam because I'm worried about that. And I know I'm not alone in, in that feeling. Also, the 58-year-old nurse who passed away sadly over the weekend being pushed by that robber um, outside of Times Square. Uh, it's not just crime, it's also mental health. So when you look at what this past mayor has done, do you think he failed us and failed us in those regards? And what would you do to make sure that people can feel safe walking around Times Square in the city, in the subway? It's so important, and this is not something that I talk about uh, lightly. I know what it is to live in fear. I know what New Yorkers are experiencing as I move throughout the city. And when we start talking about uh, crime dro dropped uh, one or two percentage, uh, that is no consolation when your loved one is killed uh, in Times Square. That's no consolation uh, when you're pu pushed on the subway tracks. And so I stated it over and over throughout this campaign against uh, many critics. 
uh, that uh, the prerequisite for prosperity is public safety and justice, and I'm going to zero in on that. There was no other candidate uh, in the race that understood that. Even the current candidates uh, don't understand uh, how we must have an intervention and prevention plan, and I'm going to produce that. And when you go online to my website, you clearly see uh, how I lay out and talk about improving uh, public safety in, in, in the city. Mental health, make sure we have the crisis management teams, make sure that we uh, have mental health professionals, because if our subway system is not safe, then we're not going to get our economy up and operating, and we can't have tourist locations where people are being shot, attacked, or abused in any way, because that's going to impact our multi-billion dollar tourist industry, and we're not going to see that. The city so, must Mr. Adams, move in the right direction. Let me, let me ask you something. Uh, we had a billion dollars disappear from mental health. A billion. And it's worse than ever on New York City streets. Would you agree? Uh, yes, I do believe that we are dealing with a serious mental health crisis on our but streets. But where did the billion dollars go? Why, why is that, like, not on the table anywhere? Well, that's the question that, number one, our oversight committee, uh, those who are looking at the budget uh, should determine that. I know I'm going to use uh, the dollars we need to make sure those who are dealing with mental health issues receive the wraparound services they deserve. I'm going to partner with organizations like the Fountain House. This is an amazing organization with an 85 percent stability rate. If we can ensure that our judges are using the Kendra's law appropriately, which far too often we're not doing that, these are great laws, uh, I believe we can do a far better job of not only dealing with those who are on the street, but stop the flow and the pipeline that place, places people on the street in the first place. Yeah, and just, I know you kind of talked about your plan, and people can go to your website and kind of look up those things, but in general, would you be able to kind of answer that question with saying, hey, we will put more police in the subway, we will put more police in these highly trafficked areas? I, I understand it's a complicated answer to this, but you should be able to at least say that, yes or no. No, it's, actually, it's not complicated. <laughs> I stood with the Transit Authority uh, Union, uh, the uh, uh, TA employees, the unions, and stated uh, that we need to put more police officers in our in our subway system. I was a former transit cop. Uh, I am not going to have my police officers congregate by the token booths or by the turnstiles. Uh, we're going to place a police officer on every train. The way I did it as a transit police officer, walking through the cars, the omnipresence, we need to bring back the sense of safety. Because mm -hmm. safety is not only actual, it's perceived. Yep. If you feel you're not safe, you're not going to be comfortable. And I'm surprised I don't see you on the subway because I'm a Metro card holding user. And so I know what you feel because I feel this sense of lack of safety. And so, yes, let's put our police officers back in the system. Let's have the sense that we are safe as a city as we commute to and from our places of, of employment. I, I know we talk, uh, you're talking about safety. Uh, traffic is a big problem. A lot of people are looking that if you become mayor, what will you do? Can you regulate e-bikes, e-scooters? Uh, the police commissioner has said that he's concerned just crossing the street in New York City. Can you crack down on that? We must. Uh, you're, and you're right. When you see uh, ATVs, the other day I was in the in this uh in brooklyn uh, i saw over uh, 500 atvs clogging traffic just totally disregarding the, the laws uh, i stood with uh, congressman sbi up in washington heights and other elected these are dangerous bikes we must really uh, ensure that a city that moves in so many different ways uh, we have streets that are safe for, for pedestrians motorists uh, skateboarders everyone that use our streets, uh, then we need to have proper enforcement. When our enforcement, have, um, it has bas basically uh, gone down, although we see more issues of people having vehicle crashes and crashes with bikes, e-bikes, uh, all the other forms of transportation, we have to do a better job and regulate it properly so people can move around, uh, redefine our streets that is safe for pedestrians, and ensure that we can move in an effective way. Then we should change how we deliver uh, goods and services trucks uh, in the morning. Let's look at that. Uh, we should examine uh, how do we better use the congestion pricing bill. This is so important for our city. We should have a first-rate transportation system, and people would get out of cars and utilize those transportation uh, alternatives that we have. 
Well, Democratic mayoral candidate Eric Adams, just a few weeks away from Election Day. <laughs> Do you have butterflies in your stomach? Uh, not at all. Uh, I feel good. Uh, I love this city. Uh, this city has made a determination on the Democratic primary. Listen, and I say it all the time, when you put on a bulletproof vest for 22 years and protected the children and families of this city, uh, that love affair is real. And so I think on uh, January 1st, we take off to intramural jersey. We put on one jersey, and that jersey is Team New York, and we're going to come together and get us through all of these crises that we are facing. That was right. good talking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care. All right.